A very warm welcome to you all if you've just joined this live telecast from New Zealand, Auckland, Snells Beach, from mychurch.com. My name's Pastor Ken Noble, preaching and ministering the Word of God this morning from Luke 5, 1 to 11, entitled, Come, Follow Me, and I Shall Make You Fishers of Men. Jesus has called each one of us to be fishers of men. You may look like a fisherman, you may talk like a fisherman, you may have read all about fishing, you may have the best fishing equipment, you may have the best fishing bait, you, have, you may have the best fishing boat, and you may even know where the fish are. But if you have never cast your net into the water, you will never catch fish. And so is the same. You may look like a soul winner. You may talk like a soul winner. You may, you may have studied every evangelistic program there is going. You may have attended every Bible school attended studies. You may have not ever missed a church service. You may mix and play with all the church folk. You may even read your Bible every day. You may pray every day. But if you've never shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with anybody, I can let, let me assure you of one thing. You are no fisherman. You are not what Jesus has called you to be. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let's pray. Father, we want the horn that marks in our lives of a true fisher of men that you called us to be. Lord, help us to hear your word this morning. Open our eyes. Help us to wash our lives just like Peter washed his nets. Help us to mend our lives just like he was mending his nets. Help us not to be afraid to fish. Help us to find the fish wherever they are. Help us to obey your fishing rules. Father, help us to follow you and be fishers of men. Amen. If you'd like to turn your Bible to Luke chapter 5, 1 to 11. Luke chapter 5, 1 to 11. So it was, at the, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, that's the Sea of Galilee, Galilee, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when Jesus had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered him and said, Master, we have toiled all night and we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let the net down. And when they had done this, they had caught so many fish, they didn't know what to do with them, and even to the fact that the nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled the boats, so they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell at his knees in front of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which had been taken during the middle of the day. And also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you are going to become fishers of men. So when they brought up their boats to land, they left them all behind and forsook everything, all the fish, all the boats, all the nets. They left them all behind. This morning, Jesus has called you this morning to be fishers of men. This command was not only to the exclusive 12 disciples, but it belongs to you this morning. This command belongs to you and me. He wants you to be a fisher of men. He wants you to examine this portion of scripture as we go through and we'll just tear it apart bit by bit and have a look at each verse and what it means to be a fisher of men in the kingdom of heaven. So in Luke 5, chapter 1, reiterating, so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake. Are you hungry and thirsty this morning to hear God's word? Jesus stopped by the lake and began teaching in the word of God by the lake, which was very unusual. Normally Jesus would be found in the synagogue, God's preaching the gospel, but not this day. He came to the lake 
and there were so many people crushing him and pressing against him, his, his knees were in the water, pushing so hard. Whilst Jesus was pre preaching, the, the crowd was so massive, just to hear every word that Jesus had to say. Can you imagine coming to your church today and all of Snell's Beach came to church just to hear the word of God? Can you imagine Jesus rolling up at the beach or your local church or just appeared on the shores of, of the beach here, right here in Snell's Beach and started preaching? Do you think people would stop and roll up just for a 30 minute sermon? Do you think they'd just roll up for a quick prayer? Do you think they couldn't wait to have a cup of tea and a catch up on the local gospel after church? Do you seriously think that would happen? Of course not. Do you long to hear this morning, this morning that Jesus wants you to become a fisherman of men? Are you thirsty from Jesus to know about his salvation, about his plan for your life, about the power of his resurrection, about heaven, what God has called you to do and his plans for your life? Are you so thirsty this morning, just like this crowd was, pressing up against Jesus? Or is the gossip in the kitchen at the church way more interesting? This crowd pressed in so close to hear Jesus, he found himself getting crushed closer and closer to the water's edge. So as Jesus looked over his shoulder in Luke 5, 2, he saw the two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had disappeared from them and were washing their nets. These fishermen had spent all night, tired, hungry, wet, thirsty. They needed a shower, they were dirty from fishing, and now had beached the boats in total disappointment. Busy cleaning their nets, earwigging to what Jesus was saying off the boats. We should also in our lives be cleaning our nets, cleaning our lives, ready to catch more fish, just like these disciples was. Peter was cleaning the nets, ready for another catch. Are you cleaning your net this morning for men's souls to be caught into the kingdom of God? The fishermen were preparing for the next night's fishing trip. Are you preparing for your next trip to win a soul to Jesus Christ? Are you cleaning your life? Are you mending your life before God this morning to be fishers of men? Fishing for fish isn't easy. I can attest to that. We fish regularly. It's just like fishing for men. It's not easy. But in our Christian permanent responsibility, you will never ever be relieved from what God has called you to be. He's asked you this morning to be fishers of men. From now on, you'll be called to be catching men's souls. There will be many times that you'll share the gospel and you will be laughed at, scoffed at, jeered at, made fun of and rejected. But let me this morning tell you, do not be discouraged. Remember, Jesus was scoffed at and laughed at and spared for you and has spilt his blood in Calvary for you. Remember, casting the net of the word of God into watering men's souls is way more important than catching fish. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, just to find one fish, one single soul. How can you put a value on that and the joy and the experience of knowing that you have caught a soul into the kingdom of heaven this morning? We never know exactly how people react. We should never grow weary or continu of continuously being casting our net our word and sharing the word of God to other people that cross our paths. This is our responsibility. This is our duty. And sounding out the good news, Jesus saves. We cast the net. And in the same way that Peter cast his net, God puts the fish in the net, the souls of men in the net of the kingdom of heaven, just like he did with Peter's net, so full of fish, we don't know. Friend, friends, we will never catch any fish if we do not cast our nets into the deep. If we never spread the word of God with our friends and our neighbours and the people that clearly need Jesus, the call to be fishers of men is to all of us that believe. Do what Peter did. Get in the boat. Push away from the shore. Launch into the deep. Cast your net into the, wa into the water of men's souls. And watch Jesus put men's souls into the net of eternity. This is what Jesus has asked us to do. He's asked us to be fishers of men. In Luke 5, 3, carrying on, Jesus got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. 
I believe there was a very clear reason this, why Jesus wanted to speak to, from this boat. He had an appointment. He wanted to speak to the owner of this boat, Simon Peter. Today, I can assure you, Jesus wants to speak to you and your boat. Wherever you're at, wherever you're at in life, he wants to speak to you. God had something special to say to Peter. Jesus had a personal encounter with Simon. He met Jesus. He met Peter just where he was at. Jesus this morning wants to meet you just where you're at. Whether it be at church, whether it be at the workplace, whether it be in a boat, whether it be where you live, Jesus this morning wants to have an encounter and meet you. Simon Peter had an appointment. I'm asking this morning, have you had an appointment with the living Christ? Have you personally met Jesus in your life? Have you ever, have you ever given your life to Christ? Is your heart racing and pounding? wanting to hear the words of Jesus. Peter found himself thinking about so many verses when he met Jesus on the boat. A little later, Peter found himself coming to tears because it seemed like God was actually speaking to him. Is God speaking to you this morning to become fishers of men? Did you once attend Sunday school but have forgotten that Jesus loves you? Were you brought up in a Christian home and gone away? Did you once attend church and do not attend any longer? Have you left your first love for the Christ that gave his all for you? Suddenly, do the words of Jesus come rushing back to your mind this morning that you may have neglected the day Jesus has an appointment with you here this morning with the living Christ? Or maybe you're planning a sleep just like Peter did. He was planning to have a nap before he went for the midnight fish. Or are you choosing to go fishing on Sunday rather than going to church? Or are you choosing to ignore the things that you once knew and loved, but now they are irrelevant in your life? It's in these times I can assure you that God has something special to say to you, and I'm requesting tonight that you do not m miss this appointment with Jesus Christ. Do not miss fitting in your devotions. It's in these times God will meet you and he'll have something special to say to you and he'll put fish in that net. Peter had forgotten the things of God that mattered most. He had sinned. He'd forgotten God. My question to you, have you forgotten Jesus this morning? After a long night of fishing without catching any fish and then after a long morning of cleaning the nets, the last thing Simon wanted to do, I can assure you, I know from fishing would probably to be sit, sat down and listen to a sermon. But I'm pretty confident after listening to the words of Jesus, he was very, very glad that he wanted to gobble up the words of Jesus and listen to every word. Do you want to gobble up every word of the Lord this morning? Is it more than life to you this morning? Do you want God's word more than anything else? Or you rather listen to the voices of men? Peter wanted the word of the Lord so bad. Peter wanted it more than sleep. He wanted it more than rest, more than food, the Bible says. Simon certainly needed these things in the natural, and so do we. But Jesus says this, Take no thought of tomorrow, what you will eat. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And because of Simon's decision to forsake all and to listen to Jesus, Jesus blesses Peter abundantly with massive amounts of fish, and even greater spiritual blessing follows, follows his life. He brings many people to Christ through Peter. When we abide Jesus, blessings flow. And also some pretty strange things happen when we trust in the Lord. For we know there's no other way but to trust in Jesus. Peter obeyed, and even when it didn't make sense, and quite often we're asked this morning in our walk with the Lord to obey the Lord even though it doesn't make sense. It's a, the things of the Lord against the carnal mind of man. But Peter obeyed what didn't make sense. In Luke 5, 4, we continue when he had stopped speaking. He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon was confused because normally you wouldn't catch fish in the middle of the day. We know that. Simon was the fisherman. Jesus was a carpenter. You would have thought that Simon would have been teaching Jesus how to fish. 
But no, it was the other way round. Peter had already been fishing all night and had caught not a thing. And besides that, he was probably near the middle of the day now. And everyone that knows about fishing, that the middle of the day is the worst time to go fishing. The fish are sleepy. They've had a good feed of seashells. They do not eat in the middle of the day. It's generally the worst time to go fishing. The fish have hidden under a rock with their mum and dad and in safe arms, the mummy and daddy, the big fish. And they've all gone sleepy. We know because we don't get fish in the middle of the day. They've gone into the deeper parts of the ocean. They're hiding. So the chances are, if they didn't catch anything at night, they surely weren't going to catch anything during the middle of the day. And finally, most frustrating of all for Simon is that he's just finished cleaning up all the nets and all the, all the gear and all the rigmarole of fishing for the night. And he was certainly preparing to have a sleep, ready for the night fish. So Jesus took Peter from where he was at to where Jesus wanted Peter to be. He took Peter into the deep. Jesus is also asking you and taking you today into his deep. He wants you to go deeper into the word of the Lord, of the Lord deeper into, into his word. He encourages it ever so gently and sometimes with his words of compassion and kindness and good, goodness. Jesus is taking us. He's the captain of our souls into the deep. He gently pushes us pushes off the boat from one level of stability, a symbolization of shallow water near the shore, to a place where we are totally dependent of God. Are you dependent on God and the deep work and the deep things of God this morning, in the depth of God's word and ministry and his scriptures? And we might also mildly argue with him saying, Lord, I've already been there, I've done that, I've failed. I've tried reading the Bible, I've prayed today, nothing happened, nothing's working. But like Peter said to Jesus, but if this is what you want me to do, to go once again from where I am now, then so be it. Can you say this morning, then so be it to Jesus? Can you say I will do and go where he wants me to go? Are you prepared this morning to say to Jesus, so be it, Lord Jesus, I will go where you want me to go. I will do the calling that you want me to do, the job that you have prepared me to do. What happens in the deeper water? It's really scary, you know. It's more unstable. It's less familiar. It's in the deep where the big fish live. Fishermen never catch fish in the small shallows. They have to go out into the deep and catch big fish. Likewise, Jesus wants you to take you from the comfort of your shoreline and your prayer life. He wants to take you from the comfort of your shallowness in the word of God and put you in the deep and find spiritual food for your soul and become more dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where God is taking you to or what direction you're going with him, but he promises to go with us. For he says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And the great thing to know that even though we don't know where we're going, Jesus is in the boat. He's the captain of our life. He's with you, the Bible says. I'll never leave you. I'm with you even to the end. Today, Jesus wants you to take you into the deep. You look what Simon says in Luke 5, verses 5. Simon answered him and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing, and nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Simon suddenly had a light bulb moment and has this outstanding statement of faith and says to Jesus, Hey, Master, you're not making any common sense at all. Nevertheless, at your word, your wish is my command. So Simon lets down the nets deep down into the water. Are you prepared this morning to let your net go down to the deep of depth of God's word? Sometimes the things of God are strange to us. The things that God wants us to do doesn't make sense in the natural. But if God has spoken to us through his word, we must obey because it makes sense. In Luke 5, 6 and 7, when they'd done this, they caught so many fish and their net was breaking, so they signaled to their mates across above the boats, tell them to, hey, come over here and help us. We've got so many fish. And they came and filled all their boats up, and so they began to sink. Obedience to Christ's command always results in massive blessings. Here we see the blessings of a boatload of fish. So many, in fact, that their nets were about to break and smash. And they had to call their mates over to help them. But even when the two boats were not large enough to hold all the fish, they filled all the other boats as well. When God tells us to do something, 
And it doesn't make sense. For the Bible says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. My question is, your, is your boat full this morning? Is your cup full and running over this morning? God wants to bless you this morning. But you have to be like Simon, who says, Hey, this doesn't make sense, Lord. But nevertheless, at your will, word, I will obey it. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on his way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Are you trusting in Lord Jesus Christ this morning like Peter did? Even though it didn't make sense. Peter trusted the Lord. He knew what he was doing. He cast the net on the most unlikely time of the day. Trust and obey. And there we learn that the disciples are aware now suddenly when they caught all these fish of their own sinfulness. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am such a sinner. O Lord, o Lord, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James, John and the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon in the fishing business. Simon's response to me is quite surprising. Why did this massive amount of fish cause Simon to suddenly realise of his sinfulness? How would you have reacted? I know how my wife would have reacted. It would have been great joy. There would have been a great party. We would have invited friends around. We would have had a great time eating all the fish and smoking it. But not Peter. He fell down and says to the Lord, Please leave me alone because I'm such a sinful man. Because I've forgotten you. I realise the thing that I should have remembered, I have forgotten. My question to you this morning, have you forgotten the goodness of the Lord? Have you departed from the Lord? Is it of no remembrance to you anymore, no relevance? It's just a fairy tale that the world wants you to believe it is. It's almost a year ago Jesus had called Simon to follow him. He'd committed his life to Jesus. But in that year, he'd forgotten the Lord. How many years have you forgotten the Lord? He was struggling. Are you struggling? Peter went back to the things of the world, fishing. Have you gone back to the things of this world? He would had to provide for his own family. He had to put food on the table. Simon had stopped following Jesus. Have you stopped following Jesus this morning? Simon remembers the scriptures that come to his mind quickly. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Peter now remembers that Jesus promised that he would never leave him, nor forsake him, or go without food or clothes. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body then raiment, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father fed them. Are you not much better than these this morning, I'm asking you? Jesus asked that question. Simon recognises his sin. He recognises that Jesus had promised these things to him. And he promises these things to you and I this morning as well. And making something else and something else in our lives. Like Peter did, he made fishing as God. For the Bible says, For thou shalt have no other gods before me. Peter had made fishing his ultimate God. What have you made your God of this morning? Thou shalt not make unto me any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven and earth or that is underneath the water. That is what Simon Peter realised. He'd been put fishing first. We all know fishing's enjoyable. I know I love to fish. My wife loves to fish. We all love to fish. But the supreme priority in our lives should be to follow Jesus. There's nothing more important or more rewarding than to follow Jesus. Simon was chasing it after a few fish, but he got a massive load of fish. But even still, it's only fish. Some of us chase after big money, a nice car, a new house. We may get it, 
but these things are only things. And these things are where moth and rust does corrupt and thieves do steal. But the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Peter reminded himself suddenly that Jesus said that these things that he was making as God are only things and they'll pass away. And now he meets the eternal father, Jesus, and he realizes after a year of neglecting the Lord, he's been chasing the wrong objects in his life. So finally in Luke 5, in the chapter, verse 10, and Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, from now on you will catch men. Jesus has, has just, had just given the biggest success of their fishing careers. Never in their whole lives had they ever caught so many fish. This was like winning lotto. And now Jesus says to them, leave the lotto ticket behind. Leave it all behind. From now on you will catch men. He says, you think this is a big success? You think this is a big winner? You think catching a boatload of fish is exciting? Reeling in a human life into the kingdom of heaven is way more exciting for the Bible says he that winners souls is wise. The value of a single human soul is greater than a boatload of fish. If the disciples had caught one single person out of the clutches of the devil and helped bring them to the eternity, the catch alone is of an infinitely and eternity way more valuable. And all the fish in the world have died and all the fish in the world have gone to sleep and all the fish have been eaten up but human beings and souls will live on and on and on in eternity Jesus is inviting Peter to make a catch that will last for eternity and Jesus is asking you this morning to make your choice to catch fish that will last for eternity your worldly profession may be an accountant maybe a school teacher a contractor a builder a businessman but that is just something to put food on the table this morning folks your real profession, your real calling is to be fishers of men. And when you catch men, wherever they are, and bring them into the kingdom of heaven, and you say, I know I'm supposed to witness, I know it's difficult, I know I'm meant to evangelize, I know I'm meant to catch men, and it's so hard, I don't know what to do. I'm afraid, I, don't have it. I won't be able to answer any of the questions. Let me tell you this morning, each one of us feel that way. But do you know what? How to come up, overcome this feeling? In Matthew 4, 19, when Jesus first called Simon Peter and Andrew and John and James to his disciples, he gave them the key to become fishers of men. And he said these two words. Here's the key to be a fisherman of men. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Are you willing to give up your priorities to follow Jesus? Are you willing to give up what you think you know about life and success and just obey Jesus no matter what? Are you willing to give up your plans for your life to follow the King of Kings and become fishers of men? Simon Peter became one of the greatest fishers of men in the world and transformed the world and changed the course of history. It's all because he obeyed Jesus and said, Come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Jesus is extending an invitation to each one of you this morning. Follow me. If you've never trusted in the Lord, the Saviour and Lord of your life, you remain lost in your sin, let me encourage you this morning to leave everything behind and follow Jesus. Step into the boat with Jesus, push away from the shore, launch into the deep, obey and go fishing with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, as we have just heard your call this morning to these dear people listening to this broadcast to be fishermen and men, help us to step into the boat with you and listen to your word and obey your word even when it doesn't make sense to cast deep our nets into the deep, to catch men's souls into the deep depth of your word and harvest the lost fish into the kingdom of heaven. Just like Peter realised, we too realise that we are nothing but sinful men. We are afraid to speak and share the gospel with people. We are weak, we are tired just like Peter was. We need to sleep, we are disappointed with our catch. We are needy people needing to come and follow you this morning. Help us to forsake all obey you, follow you for the rest of our lives to be fishers of men for your glory. Now may the Lord keep these dear people listening to this broadcast from evil, keep their lives. Now the Lord keep your going ins and coming outs from this time forth and forevermore and bring us all again next week to your call to be fishers of men. Amen. I'll lift a little bit out. Come. A bit longer than normal.